I'm a Christmas movie nut. All of them. Christmas Story, Elf, Polar Express, Christmas Vacation, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, Rudolph, even if nobody's watching, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. But one of my must-see favorites, It's a Wonderful Life. In fact, my family always has at least one ornament on our tree that reminds us of this movie. This one right here, a bell. And if you have to ask why a bell, just go, just go, go now, find It's a Wonderful Life and stream it. Seriously, go, go, I'm not kidding, you're missing something. Now, for the rest of you who do know what I'm talking about, let's talk for a moment about compassion. And don't worry, all those other folks, they'll be back after they've watched that awesome movie. So, compassion. We define compassion as caring enough to do something about someone else's need. And when it comes to Christmas stories, what could be a better example of compassion than young George Bailey? I mean, think about it. From his compassion for Mr. Gower, the druggist, to his compassion for his brother, his neighbors, and even good old Violet Bick, George lived a life that was characterized by his ability to understand what someone else needed and actually do something about it. By the end of the movie, we all see how these small acts of compassion have made George, not Potter, the richest man in town. It's what gave him a wonderful life. Now, as much as I love that movie, it's actually not the best story of compassion. And in fact, it's not even the best Christmas story about compassion. And I, I know you're not surprised to hear me say it, but isn't compassion what the Christmas story is all about? I mean, that's why we're taking the entire Christmas season to talk about compassion and ask a different question each week to get kids and families thinking about how they can show compassion this Christmas. We kick off December with one verse of scripture that summarizes the entire Christmas story. It's actually our memory verse for the month too. Compassion starts with God. And this is a verse that we want every parent, every leader, every child to memorize and carry with them for the rest of their life. In John 3:16, we read, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. When God sent his one and only son, he did something about our greatest need. That's what Christmas is all about. For the next three weeks, We'll take a closer look at how God's compassion shows up throughout the Christmas story, starting with the book of Luke. If you start reading the Christmas story from the beginning, you read about an angel who came to a girl named Mary. He saw our greatest need and was doing something about it. To do so, God used a young woman who was astonished that God would give her this responsibility. This week, we want to help kids understand that God can use anyone to meet others' needs and challenge them to consider how God might use them. But it doesn't end there. In the most incredible part of this Christmas story, Jesus is born in Bethlehem. We don't always think about it, but when you take the time to understand what's really going on here, you discover it's pretty amazing. This is the moment that God stepped onto the planet in the form of a human baby. God cared enough about our need, not only to recognize it, but to send his son to become like us so that he could do something about that need. It truly was the greatest gift. In response to God's gift to us, we challenge kids to answer this question. What are some ways you can give? In the season that more and more is all about what we can get, we hope kids show compassion to those in need. Next. We'll kick off Christmas week with what happens later that same night. We discover that angels startled a group of shepherds and their flocks. And the shepherds who heard the message that night were never the same. They couldn't wait to share the good news of great joy to everyone in town. This good news of God's compassion is as powerful today as it was 2,000 years ago. And we want kids to think about the people in their own life who need to hear the good news about Jesus. And we close out our month on compassion with something John wrote about God's love in his first letter to the church. God initiated compassion when he sent his only son into the world to give his life for us. John goes on to challenge his audience with the same question we're asking kids this week. Because of God's great love for us, how will we love others? God loved us. 
God saw our greatest need. He had compassion on us, and he sent his son to become one of us and to be the payment for our sin. It's God's compassion for us that drives us to show compassion toward others. And we can't wait to hear the stories from your churches how families showed compassion throughout this Christmas season.